Yes, yes, Arsenal played football, but don't worry, we're not here to talk about that. We'll still talk about transfers. This is the Arsenal Vision post-match podcast. My name is Alex Smith, the Goodbye Man, Yankee Gunner. Um, so I am in the undisclosed location, but I'll give you a hint. It's gray and raining all the time. Does that give you a hint? If you're watching the video, you can see the gray raininess out of the window. Um, if you're not watching the video, you'll just have to imagine what gray and rainy looks like. And when I checked into my hotel, the woman said, I'm sorry, it's it's quite cold. And I said, ha, ha, this is spring weather where I come from, lady. So I am thrilled to be here. And there will be more soon on why I am where I am at. But hopefully my sound will be okay. Hopefully this episode will be okay. I want to be clear with you. I know Arsenal played a match. I know they won that match. I know that this is called the Arsenal Vision Post Match Podcast. It shouldn't be called that anymore anyway. We are here to talk about transfers. And the reason we're going to start with that is because I know what's going to happen. We're going to put this stupid podcast out and they're going to announce Mudrick 10 minutes later. Well, we're not going to let that happen. We're just going to talk about it anyway. And then, of course, we will talk about the FA Cup victory, the date we've booked at the Eddie Hod with Man City, and, of course, the North London Derby on the horizon. Here to talk about all that with me now is Clive. You can find him on Twitter, Clive PFC. Hello, Clive. Hello, hello. How, so, uh, how are you enjoying... The sunny yeah. UK. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't understand, mate. There's not six feet of snow out, and it doesn't have a minus sign in front of the weather, the temperature. So I'm I'm delighted. I'm always happy to be here, to be honest. And and I am quite jet lagged. I literally landed about 45 minutes to an hour ago. So uh, yeah, bear with me. It, I have an excuse for my takes being bad today. Is is what I'm going to say. Um, I, I did hear the instant reaction. I thought you and Paul did a brilliant job. Um, I'm I'm excited to talk about the game. Arsenal did win three nil in the end. Maybe made tough sledding of it in the first half. Easy work in the second half. We'll cover that. But let's start with some transfer news. As I said, both for the hashtag clicks and to cut off Arsenal from doing what you know they're going to do to us, which is announce something right after we put the episode out. Let's start with the Felix thing, though. I wanted Jao Felix. I've been pretty clear. I think that he has the kind of talent that maybe just maybe puts you over the line for a title this season. And that's worth pretty much anything. Um, and he doesn't disrupt the hashtag project because he's only on loan, right? So if you don't want him, you don't want him. He's going to go to Chelsea. And the crazy thing about that move, Clive, is they're going to pay the massive loan fee. They're going to pay the massive wages. They have no option to buy. Simeone's announced he's leaving at the end of the season. So the new manager may decide he wants to keep him. And all of this to what? nab a Europa League spot. So I have to admit, I'm a little disappointed. I thought he fit more of what we would need than what they would need. I know this maybe never had the feeling of real realism to it because of the the prices being mooted for a loan. But what's your take on that move? I find it incredibly bizarre. Bowley just firing the money cannon in all directions. Yeah, Chelsea are all over the place. And I think they've got about... You talk about our project. They've got about eight projects going on at the same time. And um, <laughs> yeah. they're buying all these young players. They're overpaying for them. And they've also got, they're, they're buying at the top end of the table as well, you know? And it's like, okay, what are you actually doing? They've got a project manager and they've got non-development project fans just want to, that are still trans, you know, still um, transitioning from Roman's era. And they're not having a development manager. They're not having Arsenal bowl into their, to their ground and literally beat them up and then sing about it. They're not having Man City <laughs> do that to them as well. They were literally around 20 months ago, they were the champions of Europe and world club champions thereafter. So this is a big transition for them. But the reason why they've gone for it, Elliot, is that they basically had so many injuries on that left-hand side. So Pulisic has gone down. Didn't take much for him to go down. Raheem Sterling has gone down. World Cup, post-World Cup injury. He's gone down. And they've got so many injuries in those wide areas. So I can see... I can see the reason why they went for this one and why he chose them or it's probably down to something called a money. You know, um, mm, heard they, it. they will pay the monies that are required and he will play off the left, coming on his right foot, little step over, dink it into the middle to their wonderful centre forward called Aubameyang. Right? So, or, or Havertz. It's just sticking plaster stuff, mate. It really is. Yep. And good luck to them. With, with regard to Arsenal... Um, he is what I call my booty call player, right? I liked him. <laughs> I liked him, but I, was, <laughs> I wasn't sure about a longer term relationship. You know what I mean? And, fair enough, um, fair enough. And, and I just, I just couldn't imagine him, you know, I just couldn't imagine him 
in our shirt. I don't know what it is. So I looked at all the clips. I looked at everything. Um, I could see he could play false nine, turn around, step over, flick it left, round the corner, good finishes. Oh, well, it's so seductive. But I'm just not sure he was Arsenal. And I, I, and I can't put the X on it. You know, the other day we did we did a show, didn't we, on the Highbury squad, and I said the same thing. And as I was saying that, I thought, what are you saying that for? It doesn't make sense. It's not scientific. But sometimes you get a feeling about a player. And I just didn't feel he was quite us. Does that make sense? I'm just going to say, between the decent wife comment, calling Felix the, the woman at the bar at 2 a.m., now calling him a booty call player, I just hope that that lovely wife of yours does not listen to the Arsenal Vision podcast. <laughs> There's all kinds of stuff coming out here that could be really She's troublesome. A, well, yeah, well, for people who have seen my wife will definitely use the phrase punching above your weight. You know what I mean? So, uh, so that's, I'm very fortunate. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Uh, the mere fact that I have a wife means I am punching above my weight, I think it is fair to say. Um, okay, <clears throat> now... The player that it does look, and just to put a final punctuation on the Zhao Felix thing, player, how you rate players is very personal and individual. You can use data, you can use the eye test, you can just have a feeling. It really doesn't matter. I think for me, I could see a path, if it all goes right, to getting the player that once was valued at the price Atleti paid for him. And having him integrate quickly and put us over the top. And I was willing to gamble on that. I just, I, I guess it's, it's strange to me that the player would want Chelsea, that Chelsea would want the player in their situation, but it's old news now it's done. So what isn't old news, what's new news and probably breaking or potentially breaking, you know, let's just say it as the pod is uploading um, is the Mudrick thing. It sounds like we are getting pretty close to a deal that would be amenable to both parties it looks like we're down to now percentages of what's upfront money versus deferred money and uh, money that has qualifiers to it, right? Um, clauses to, for them to hit it. And I, I think I kind of want to set aside, Clive, the question of whether this is money well spent because it's always going to look like money well spent if the player plays well and it's never going to look like money play, well spent if the player plays poorly. What I will note is that this project, you know, I think of it as project youth of a sort, but we paid big money for Ramsdale. We paid big money for Ben White. We paid big money for Gabriel Jesus. What makes this project sort of unique, aside from the, the Martinelli and the Saka of it, is our bigger money signings have all hit. We've been really good at this. So, you know, that that's encouraging. But more to the point, with Mudrick arriving, what is your expectation for for what he can provide us in the short term, vis-a-vis -vis this season. Let's not look long-term right now. What's he going to give us this season, in your estimation? Assu assuming this gets done. Yeah, so we, obviously we don't know where he is fitness-wise, but he, what I will say, his physical potential looks amazing. He is in tip-top shape. And also, he's a great athlete. And what, what Arsenal do, and we do this now, so when the ball goes into wide areas, unlike City when they play Mares and, and Foden, they, they're almost like creative wide men that stop the ball and then link and then they go again down the middle. What we do in wide areas is, is we accelerate. We accelerate the play. So our wide forwards have to almost have the gene of being a creative player, a, a carrying winger, and someone that can come off the side, Theo Walcott out to in run in behind, right? So, and he does all of that. So, no problems there. He can he can carry it. He can run in behind. He can he's got speed, agility, speed, endurance. I, I just I don't worry about his ability to fit in. Obviously, he's coming into preseason. So as we're recording now, there's a there's a converse, there's an article out there in the Athletic saying he's having to join up with Shakhtar in Turkey for their preseason camp. Which probably means Elliot nothing's going to break in the next twenty five minutes, right? So. Um, but it shows. All that right, we're... let's stop recording. We'll, we'll just talk FA Cup. I'll, I'll delete it. No, you know so, what? You know what? Forget it. Just so keep going. This is gold. Going. Seriously. So, so I think. I think. Um, <laughs> well, you don't, you don't know, right? One tweet changes everything, doesn't it? Right. So. Um, mm. So. But I do, I do think my only worry this is just the price. If they're talking, we have to pay the full eighty million. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot for someone that hasn't even played eighty games. You know, it, it's a lot of money. 
the talent is obvious. You don't need to get onto Y Scout to find out what he's all about. You know, I don't think. Um, please do not slander the scouting videos, though. Thank you, <laughs> you, you definitely do need to get on Y Scout and then go on Patreon and watch the scouting. Videos. Yeah, but you, you, you know what I mean. It's the easiest one we yeah, ever no, did, I wasn't it? Yeah. It's the easiest Jumped, one we ever done. The screen, yeah. You can't miss it. You just can't miss it, right? So, um, so yeah, I think he's got what we need. And more importantly, unlike Joe Felix, I was worried about the person because I didn't know the person. I think Madrid, we all feel as though we know him. And we've certainly got a player in our team that does know him. And if we're buying him, we've done our due diligence in a way that we have an inside link that not other any other club would have, basically. Mm. You know, so um so yeah, so I that believe that makes my trust levels go go really high. So yeah, just just get on with it. And hopefully for me, hopefully it's like a a forty five plus twenty five type deal. Do you know what I mean? It's that mm-hmm. type of number. It feels better, 45 at the base level, and then you the rest is percentage on top. That sort of thing feels better. But as soon as I, as soon as I mention a number, someone's going to come back and say, Clive, you idiot, it's going to cost way more than that, blah, blah, blah. So I've done it now, left myself open for a kick in. But that's what I feel mm. comfortable with. Look, he's going to run very fast. He's going to hit the ball very hard with his foot. That's that's what he does, right? He's He's a finisher, and he's a fast, fast running person. Um, I think there are parts of his game that need to be cleaned up. I think that there are, there's a technical level question there. Um, I think his technical level is high, Elliot. I think, yeah, I think he's incredibly he, There's some big technical. touches around the box that we saw. And, you, you know, you don't want to judge on small sample size. I think the other thing is you can never, you know, the funny thing is the, the whole, he plays in a lower league, a, a lower caliber league thing can cut two ways. One way it can cut is, you can't judge him because that league's quality isn't very good. But another way it can go is it's too easy. And sometimes when it's too easy, players know they can have an extra touch, a bigger touch. Yeah, they can, they they can use their things. speed when they need to use their, you know, their their technique. So it is hard to know how that will translate, to be fair. Shall, shall I tell you what I'm really excited for? Because all the clips we see are very individualistic and there's nobody else in the screen. <laughs> no teammates mm-hmm. around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're literally watching like we yeah. are, like, a, on, like they're on camera. As he's going past three or four people. Well, just imagine if he's knocking it inside to Jesus or Martinelli, that people can keep up with him and understand how mm-hmm. to give him the ball back. So he becomes a one two merchant. There's not many one twos in those videos, is there? He's got no one to pass he, to. Look, he's a very, very different player than the guy we have playing in that role right now, though. So well, I, I will say what, which is maybe some conversation to have, watching Martinelli's development on the left-hand side is becoming very interesting because I think mm. he is starting to be a senior forward. He's starting to mm-hmm. roam. He's going to get throw-ins on the other side of the pitch. He's <laughs> knocking it off. He is growing up, mate, and that pitch is looking too small for him. He is showing real signs of what he could be down the, down the road. So I don't worry about this signing. I, do, I don't worry about the congestion. I know we need six. We need six forwards. Mm. And if it's Smith Rowe, Eddie, Jesus, Saka, Martinelli, and Mudrick, that's a nice six. That really is a nice six. See, see, it's funny. When you were saying, like, lay it off to Martinelli or one-twos with Jesus, I was thinking you're, you have a picture of a possible left eight in your mind. And to me, no, no, you know, no. that's not a role. He's okay, a forward. Yeah. He's a forward. I want, yeah, you yeah. want him on the last line. You want him hurting yep, you. Yeah, I agree. He can play 10. Obviously, he can play second forward inside he can pass it we got these wing forward creators in the front six they can all carry create their own shot can run with it running behind they can do things i think it's even when eddie was playing out on the left and people saying he's not a left i liked it i said it i said this is important for his development he needs to be able to carry the ball he can't just be a number nine goal hanger on the penalty spot not in this team you yeah. need more ability yeah. or, or, or to, to move the ball link the play so that's not a bad front six, so I, I can live with that. I can live with that. Yeah, yeah, well said. All right, well, look, we'll have plenty of time to analyze him when and if the deal gets done. I think I wanted to put that up front in case some news broke and because it looks like we're getting close. And uh, I will say that Arteta's comments are getting increasingly pointed about wanting reinforcements. He's He's not being shy about this. I think he's testing out the power he has at the club with the start he's made to the season by being pretty direct about what he wants, 
Um, I'm sure he said it directly to Vinai and Josh and Stan. So I, you know, I don't think it's a secret, but he's, he's not hiding it. And I think a manager does that because it does put pressure on the club, right? Because if the club doesn't come through with the move, then it looks like they haven't backed the manager. Whereas if the manager says, I've got great players. If we bring in more great, if not, we have the squad we need. It's a little easier for the club to pass. He's, he's put them in a position now where not bringing in a player will certainly be a clear message that they have not backed him when he was clear he needed the reinforcements. So I, I don't think there's any um, ambiguity there. Agreed? Agreed. And I will say, as I was we did the interview actually last night and I went to sleep and I scoured Twitter for any breaking news and the Lakers were playing. So I, I never sleep, right? So I just basically refreshed Twitter all night long. And so, mm-hmm. what, mm-hmm. but what, <laughs> what I, uh, that healthy lifestyle you, you were advertising. <laughs> yeah, right yeah, I'm on it. I'm on it. And so what I did, <laughs> what I did know, what my, my takeaway Elliot, from this game was we really need to make some changes. We do we need inf- reinforcements. And I don't know why it really struck me, and hopefully we'll get onto that conversation. It really struck me last night more than any night that we got some we got some problems in midfield. We got some yeah. problems in ball progression. We really did. Outside the first and it's game. A, it, it's a reminder of the mountain we're trying to scale when you watch City heavily rotate for Chelsea in the cup and really swat them. And we heavily rotate for Oxford in the cup. And it takes us half to get going, and we have to bring some first team, you know, players and some starters in to 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 make it safe. So, I think the contrast is clear between us and City, and we've now set up thanks to a victory in the FA Cup. He says pivoting, uh, segueing, a three three games against City the rest of the season, and it looks like two of them will be close together. Um, just a quirk of the fixture list, but it seems to happen a lot. So, you know, City just played Chelsea twice. We're going to be playing City twice. Very, very interesting to see how the managers handle that. But let's stick to the game that was played against Oxford. And look, I I don't know, maybe you want to call it a classic cup tie, magic of the cup, whatever. That first half, Oxford were up for it. Their fans were up for it. They were getting stuck in. I think this is a really tricky fixture, obviously, because the Derby is on the horizon. The starters are out there. Saka, Martinelli, and Kedia. They know the Derby's on the horizon. The rest of the players don't play a heck of a lot together. And so they're not going to have that sharpness and that match, you know, that that match fitness that that you need to really be on top of your game. Clive, let's start with the obvious thing that I will whinge about because it's just how I'm wired. What were your thoughts when you saw Martinelli and Kedia and, and Saka starting with the Derby? you know, six days away, five days away. I, I thought two of the three would start. I didn't think three mm-hmm. of the three would start. But I thought maybe we could go fast start and then um, put them on their back and sit them down. There is no congestion here, Elliot. There is no congestion. We're playing on Sunday. Then we have a game the Sunday after. So there's plenty of time. We're not compressed. The compression game was the the Newcastle game, if you see what I mean. That was the one that was compressed on the end of two previous fixtures that were quite close. So there is no issue here with fatigue it's just safety right safety of injury so we also don't Mm. want to go into a derby not playing for two weeks so i get it one hour get off or half an hour get off but we played all three and and you know martinelli was last seen in disneyland paris i don't think he was killing himself over the weekend rolls into this game and and treats the game as a training session and and off we pop right so i i will say to you i don't want to get into this now but I I've got this in my head. So I've got to get it out. I've got to get it out. Yeah, um, let's do it. If it's in your head, bring it out. I'm half asleep anyway. I, I, mate, when we have our normal team, we've got ball progression everywhere. That's who we are. Mm-hmm. Ben White, ball progression. Saliba, ball progression. Party. Gabriel is very much improved. Sinchenko, they get the ball forward. Everybody ahead of them, that's your base five. Everybody ahead of them, I've got personality to roll in and receive it. They want it. They want the ball. They know it's coming. They they want it. And then they turn around and then suddenly the two 21-year-old sprinters are up and running to the races. They look more aggressive, more penetrative. So let's not pretend. It's a jogging game. They jog through the game. They're playing an average team. It's only three sides to the ground, for God's sake. It's a car park at one end. Let's not pretend they're going to give us everything that we normally see from them because mm. mentally they're just going to go through the motions. But I could not help but see the ball progression was so poor. And so the ball goes into holding. 
he clipped the ball down the line, doesn't want to do it, pops it back to Gabriel, who's the only one brave enough to clip it. Right? So Kieran Tinney will do his work, but it's a little bit more it lacks a bit of backspin, shall we say. You know, a bit more <laughs> a bit more uh, yeah. forceful. El Nenny, he's got the GPS on, but it's going only GPS is going sideways or backwards, right? And he's having loads of touches, shuffling across the pitch. So he shuffles across the pitch. Even League One players can close the gaps. Right? So mm-hmm. Um, Sambi, bless him, looks lost, looks lost, 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 and it's 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 heartbreaking, you know. It, he looks lost, doesn't not getting on the ball when he does. It's it's average passing. He's not showing for the ball, and then he's showing for the ball, but he's late getting there. So he gets there late. So he can only go backwards. And Vieira was thinking, well, where do I stand? He's trying to find his mm-hmm. role. So he's trying. He then runs beyond. Ball doesn't come because no one wants to, no one wants to to clip it. Eddie drops in, he gets the ball. Sometimes he's on time, sometimes he's late. Then he has three, four touches, back to El Nenny, and you know the rest of the story. And the, and then, so Martinelli said, well, I better get on the ball. So he's running everywhere trying to get on it. And Saka thinking, I've got a game Sunday, I'm standing right here. <laughs> you lot can do, <laughs> you lot do what you got to do. Smart, smart guy. <laughs> he's a smart kid, right? He's, he's yeah, the one yes. with... He's the one with the A stars, right? He said, you lot do your bit. I'm standing right here, right? You, when you're ready, give me the ball, give me the ball. But I couldn't get away from the feeling that our ball progression with the second second group is so poor. My tolerance for it, I, I don't know why, and people are going to say, at last, Clive, you've got here. My tolerance for it has gone. Because as our level of our first group has gone up, Bingo. I can't accept this mm-hmm. anymore. I can't yep. accept it, mate. We've got to do something. You can't have that talent on the top end of the pitch. You can't get the ball to them. You can't. Can I say something about this too? This is mm. why, this is sort of why my theory has always been you don't buy backups. You buy players that you think have a shot to compete to become the guy. Because when you buy backups, you get players who are not good enough to play yeah. your football if you start to get to the level you want to go. When you buy a Vieira, Vieira thinks I'm going to breathe down someone's neck because I've got the talent to play Arsenal football at the starter level. He and, has. You know, frankly, and he has, and that's yeah. right. But, you know, like that's why you need these players. Now, to be fair, I, I think we bought Sambi with the I, the idea that he would push and fight and 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 try to take that position. And he, he came into the team with a lot of promise. Clive, I, I'm probably totally overemphasizing or over-indexing one scene in a documentary. Mm-hmm. But it was there on tape, and the Amazon people thought it was su- su- significant enough to keep it in that documentary. Eddie and Keddie are sitting at a table with Sambi Lakanga, and he's he's moping. And he's moping about not getting playing time. And Eddie is like, I, hey, a lot of us aren't getting playing time, mate. You just yeah. got to keep your head up and keep fighting for it. I just... I think there are players that need to play, and when they don't play, they lose their compass, they lose their, you know, their focus. I don't yeah. know, but but he Sambi needs to doesn't play. look like the player who arrived at Arsenal, having been captain of Anderlecht, having been someone who was in our team straight away. He he looks he honestly looks a shadow of that player to me now. He at some phases when he first came to the team, he was our best midfielder. He was taking shots, he was carrying it, switching the play, jogging up behind mm-hmm. it. Now, and it's not it's not an easy night, right? Wind blowing straight down the pitch. Pitch is rubbish. They've overwatered the pitch. And half the team didn't have the right set of studs on. We looked like we were dancing on ice in some occasions, right? So it's not the best place. I wish it was our home game. We could judge a little bit more. But I can't keep making excuses for him in my mind. You have to look at the player and say, you know what? People react in different ways to not being flavor of the month. He knows he's mm-hmm. not in the first group. And I think he's struggling with it. And he looks lost. Yep. And I want him to play because I have seen it. So I know it's there. There's a level there. Whether it's Arsenal level or not, you can make your decision. But there's a level way higher than that that we've seen. You know, I've seen it in my own eyes. So this player's lost himself for the moment. And when you have that situation, you need to support that player by creating a situation for him to flourish again. You know, so that's just responsibility to the club. They've got to do something because that isn't, that's not healthy for him or for his career. He, we need to protect his career. We need to do something about that. Yeah, and look, I mean, situations work out with some players and don't work out with others. And like, I think we tend to get way too precious about the idea that we have to move on from a player. 
I've always said, you know, fail fast, right? Don't, don't put five, six seasons into something that isn't working. Um, I, I don't think the player's future is with us. And I, that doesn't mean I don't think he has a bright future. But to your point, the level has gone up. And we need players on that bench on Sundays and, you know, soon Saturdays and Wednesdays and Tuesdays or starting who can maintain the level. And I, I think one thing that was interesting about this game, I think in the first half, I think you saw where Eddie and Kedia can struggle a bit because not having an Odegaard and not having a Shaka and not having a party and not having a Zinchenko, I think I noticed th- his inability to play the Jesus role. We saw what he can do and can do brilliantly in the second half. And especially when you have a Zinchenko back on the pitch, right? When you have a Ben White come in, when you have some of these other players around him who, who can support the play a little bit better. I'm curious how you contrast that because I think what we have to realize is we have a special player in Inkedia who can get on the end of moves and finish beautifully and and really be a, a proto a prototypical center forward. And we have to accept that that's what he is and enjoy that that's what he is and and not continue to make the comparison with Jesus, who I think does different things and teases out different qualities in the team. Yeah, so for me, I look at the center forward role a bit more, more of a rounded role and that central player's got to hold two centre-backs to allow other people to go into the half spaces. That's where we play. Mm. That's it. So for Arsenal, you better learn. right? So that's what he's trying to do. And he is learning. He is definitely doing things now that he was not doing a year, 18 months ago. So fair play to him. We have other players in our books, like Sambi, like Pepe, by the way, who have not learned a damn thing and have not improved <laughs> and mm. have not changed themselves in the gym. Have You know, We've got a forward situation problem at the moment and no one's asking for Pepe to come back. I've said that before, right? So why is that? Because he hasn't improved, hasn't learned, not part of our group. So so fair play to Eddie, right? So I can't help, and I said this to Paul last night, Paul interrogated me really well, actually, and dragged stuff out of me, I didn't <laughs> want to say. But he... Um, I heard it. He, just, just bring your truth, Clive. I, I've got to bring my truth. I've got to bring my truth. Mm-hmm. So... And fun, funny enough, someone sent me a clip about Arteta in the training videos, and he said, Eddie, you're jogging. That's why you lose mm-hmm. the ball. See Saw that, that clip? Mm-hmm. And I punched, yeah, because mm-hmm. that's what I've been saying, isn't it, Eddie? I've been saying mm-hmm. he jogs, gets to his spots late, and you read why I know he's late, because he bounces off him like a trampoline, or he makes a foul, because he can't control mm-hmm. the ball. He gets there at the same time as the defender. And I sort of said, that's the issue for me. He has to be a bit more proactive to get to his spots when he's facing the play. Because when he does do that, then he can do his moves. He's got more options on his moves. If you're getting there late, what you're trying to do, you're spending three touches trying to control it so you can give it to somebody. As soon as you do that against any good side, they've got that's their form of delay, defensive principle, they want mm-hmm. to delay the forward. And basically, they just delay. He delays himself because he arrives late. And the, and the spaces are then closed, and we go around the, we go around the horseshoe again. So it's very important that he receives it, bang, penetration. You know, it's very important. That's what Jesus does, gets it turned around, takes on two men, Bosch, get off, we're off and running, right? They're running backwards. So we can't expect him to be that, but we can expect him to maybe do it in two touches, maybe two touches, and give it to somebody close, and they do the progression for him. We can't expect him to be like Jesus, firing through three people, laying it off in the penalty box. It's not going to happen. So I get frustrated by the lack of proactiveness to get to his spots, to, to play some continuity in that center forward position. But then there's the other side to his game. When he's facing the play, then he looks much better. So why not make runs in behind? And if you are making runs in behind, which I couldn't see on my screen, apologies, but be more aggressive in your movements in behind. And then you force the ball forward. You force it. If you don't get it, give on any sum. So, hey, mate, Mm. I'm not here to jog around. Give me the ball. You know, get it Mm -hmm. in behind them. You've got to make the game your game. You know, so that's not a critique of Eddie. That's a critique of anybody who's not. Don't let the game pass you by. Make sure the game is based on your strengths by demanding the ball where you want it. So, so, yeah, yeah, I, I get frustrated. I do get frustrated. But I'm trying to hold that frustration back because we need him. We absolutely need him. He's he scored two lovely goals here. Easy for him, like pint and let's praise job. the finishes. I mean, those are yeah. Th- that's just what he does. He's he's cool in those situations. Yeah, and I I do wonder like 
because I know, you know, you, you got frustrated with him. I think it was at the header at the back post against Everton last yeah, season, right? Probably you know, there, there have been moments, big moments that have that have passed him by. But I, I see a player who's definitely developing in terms of what he does with his final, you know, his final moment in the penalty he's, he's box. A much that is, more that of is still the most player. important thing in football, Clive. Yeah, you know, he's much more of an all-round player than he was. In the penalty box, he's always been decent, Elliot, to be fair. He's always been decent yeah. in the box, and he takes early shots. The goal he scored against Leeds last year when the cross came slightly behind him, he was falling over. Literally had no right to even get contact. He got a contact and steered it into the bottom corner, and I was there watching that, and I went, wow, you can do stuff around that box. What I'm waiting for is a first goal in a big game. Yeah, You know what I mean by that? First yeah. goal, mm-hmm. Spurs, Man U, City, Chelsea. Big game. The game does look a lot easier to him when we have a lead, right? Yeah. He, he, he's scored a, a second goal recently, a third goal recently. This yeah. was a second and a third goal, right? Like, So I take your point. And, and by the way, those goals still count and they still matter. They still but matter. I, I take your point. Score that score that first goal that breaks the game open. Right, know? and that's normally Saka or, that does that for us. You know, mm-hmm. or Odegaard that does that mm-hmm. for us. And that those first goals are different, mate. The different pressure is different and... I want to see him get that. And I think he will. I think he'll get that soon. So I don't know. I don't I, I'm trying not to over obsess about this because there's a lot right. But also I find myself getting frustrated at the things that are not right. Is that a little deep underlying fear that I'm not sure he's quite enough to get us through this period? And maybe mm. with a signing that fear would go down and I'd and I'd take my eye off him a little bit more. You know, so I'm trying to be really fair in this assessment, to be honest. I'll say this. He seems like a great guy. He chose to stay at Arsenal and fight for his Arsenal career as an academy player. He he could have gone off. You know, some club would have paid him. I don't know if they would have paid him 100 grand a week, to be fair. So maybe he took the best deal on offer. But he stayed at the club when he knew there wasn't a straight line path to playing time. His chances come. Jesus is out. School and goals. all he's doing is sticking the ball in the back of the net. Can't and like there's you know there's nothing more you can ask of a player when their moment comes than to stick the ball in the back of the net yeah. uh when they're a striker and so i'll admit that like i i think the things jesus gives us are things that i i miss and prefer but you'd hope that be the case from your star striker centerpiece of your summer transfer window who came over from champion manchester city i i have Nothing I can say about Eddie at this moment other than I I think he's doing brilliantly. Yeah. I, I think he's doing better than what my maybe level of expectation of him was. I think there are more things he can bring in his game. And it's interesting to see Arteta asking for him, you know, to work a little harder off the ball. I think he's a striker who comes alive when he knows the ball is going to come to him in a position to score and maybe needs to come alive in some different situations and be yeah. a little quicker. To, to think about how he can facilitate for other players. I, I looked at um some data of his and you know for a sm- it may still be a small sample size but the guy's goal scoring data is pretty unimpeachable. Yeah. Where he lags behind Jesus quite considerably is creation, yeah. right? Chance creation, shot creation, you know, playing the ball in the box for his teammates and so that's the next piece and even if it never comes as long as he's doing this, I think he, he deserves a lot of credit, you know. Yeah, agreed, agreed. You can't, okay. he's learning, mate. He's learning and he's developing. Yeah. And so that's, the, that's all you can ask for. That's all you can ask for. I, I love both finishes, by the way. And I, you know, I think it, it is easy to dismiss goals in these kinds of games, but you still have to execute. You know, you still have to execute. And Oxford yeah. were really up for it. Their fans were up for it. I, th- I thought it was great. I want to talk about Vieira, though. I think Fabio Vieira is a big story this game. And there are a couple other players that I'm, I'm interested to talk about. And I want to make sure we start to discuss the Derby, but we have another pod this week to discuss the Derby. So I don't want to get into it too much. But you mentioned you are um, trying to engage in a healthier lifestyle, Clive. And I think all of us can take a page out of your book and shoot for a healthier lifestyle. And one way you can shoot for a healthier lifestyle is by taking AG1 from Athletic Greens. That's right. So I've got my travel packs with me here. AG1 uh, is a phenomenal basically all in one nutritional supplement that can replace pills and gummies and vitamins. Um, it just goes in water. It tastes great. And then you're drinking water, which by the way is a great supplement. It's just water. You just, just drink it. It's great for you. Um, this is for gut health, sustained energy, immune system support. Um, you know, I, I think 
for me, the gut health thing was a big part of it. And I know nobody wants to hear about my gut health any more than they want to hear about me talking about shaving privates, but it is, it is part of, you know, what I was looking for. Plus the energy um, thing. Cause I had, I, I was having too much caffeine, which may have come through in the podcast. Uh, you may have noticed. That. So yeah, I, I, I absolutely love it. Um, it tastes great. It's easy to use. It replaces a whole shelf full of stuff that probably isn't delivering the benefits. It's keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, you know, all that stuff. So it's, it's really good. 75 high quality ingredients that give you, um, key daily nutrition, daily nutrition. I think that's the word I'm, I'm jet lag. Just pretend that's a word and long-term support. Okay. What are you going to do? Uh, if a free comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash vision. That's athleticgreens.com slash vision. Check it out. Do it now. Clive, is that enough of that? Indeed. Nailed it. Those guys, I swear to God, free advertising every episode. Um, okay, so Fabio Vieira. Mm. Once he had some of his guys around him, boy, did he come to life. And I, I think, you know, Eddie had some beautiful finishes. Fabio Vieira had some beautiful deliveries. It's his free kick that leads to the opener, uh, thanks to El Nenny, by the way, who has a great song. I don't know if you've seen the video going around. Tim shared it with us in the WhatsApp. Um, it's Eddie's song. I think yeah, it's Eddie, yeah, Eddie's yeah. song. Yeah, I've seen that. Very good. Yeah, very yeah. good. Oh, is, that, is, is, the, is it the Eddie song? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, well, anyway, uh, Fabio Vieira, I think. There is talent in there that just needs to catch up with his development, if that makes sense. Like he he impacts the game in moments and he just needs to, I think, come up with a complete performance, right? To do all the things that that role demands. But my goodness, you could see a path to Odegaard on the right, Vieira on the left that could be staggering in its yeah. output if this guy can put it all together. So, so what's your thought on Vieira, who I think, Aside from Eddie's beautiful finish, finishes as a player who really caught the eye. And, and yeah. by the way, I should mention a player who really caught the eye, who we were all just grousing about like not a week ago for not coming on against Newcastle. Oh, his career's over and Arteta doesn't like him anymore. Like, you know, it, it just reminds you how how quickly things can change. And I think he made he made a really good impact in this game. Yeah, so pre-game there was an interview from Ian Wright with, with uh, Arteta and he mentioned Vieira. And as soon as, soon as he says his name, Arteta can't stop smiling. I think mm. he loves this player. So for people who don't I think, agree. I think he loves him. And and so I'm watching the game and I'm thinking, oh, crikey, I'm, I'm in this ball progression hole that I'm in because I'm watching, I'm watching Rob Holden go to from left to right. I'm watching this stuff. I go, oh, no, where's Odegaard? Because Odegaard will just, he won't have that. He'll just come and get it, turn around and we're off. And so in my mind, I was saying to Vieira now, because we can't help but look at the two like we do with Eddie and Jesus, it's Vieira and Odegaard. So I'm saying to myself, be more assertive, get on the ball, get more touches. And he's a, he's a bit different. He's a bit more mobile. He's a bit more, he'll run around you. He'll run around the person in possession. And I'm thinking, okay, you're not really getting on it. And no one's giving it to you. This is a problem. So we're just playing the game out. Twat first half, to be honest. And then the ball comes over to him on the left-hand side of the pitch. And he just sort of half volleys a diagonal switch. 50, 60 yard first time, bang, <laughs> out to Shaka, right out to Shaka's toe. Saka's toe, mm. sorry. And I've Saka, got, yeah. yeah, I've got, oh, wow. Okay, so let's not pretend this kid isn't talented, right? He can put the ball where he likes when he wants to. And so just ignore it. It's all about how we're playing. So we've become more direct, get the ball to him. The game stretches out. He's got pockets to fall into because Ed, Eddie and people are running in behind. He's in the space in the holes, turns around, gets it, 2 0, go home get on the bus right so he's <laughs> he is class now i talk to people online a few famous tactico people we have got our own little mail list and some of those guys say that odegaard should be the one that should drop into the left eight and Vieira hmm. be the one that plays higher on the right because his ability to score and assist is right up there and you think about it, almost every game he plays something happens mate He's even banging one in from 20 yards. or he's, he's creating goals you can't miss. His ability to assist is literally, it's, it's on a silver platter. The goal mm. at Wolves for Odegaard. Hel helps when there's no VAR, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> one, one, of my, one of my favorite goals this year was the, the touch at Wolves when he squared it for Odegaard. Oh my God, that just, that just drew everyone yeah. to him. And it's just like, a, it's just there you can't miss. 
You know, I, I, I've got, I'm excited about this player. I'm not quite sure what he is yet, but mate, he can do it. And if we're playing his front five, back five thing, oh my goodness, the potential there is, is obvious, isn't it? You know, and um, so I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of what he could be. So I am really in the phase of, I'm giving you a break for when you're not doing it because I know you can do it and you do it when it really matters around the last third. You deliver. You know, you, mm. for those people who are unsure about him, re-look at some of his Porto videos, decision-making, quality of delivery, quality of balls. You can't miss, mate. You literally can't miss. It's it's special what he does on delivery. It's, it's, you know when Ozil was in his height, he literally couldn't, mm-hmm. You, you only had one decision to make to score. He was that good when yeah. he was at his height. This kid's got mm-hmm. a bit of that in his delivery in the last third. You can't miss it. You just got to do what's mm-hmm. what he's told you to do. You know that is special, special yeah. stuff. And the, and now I think he needs to add what Odegaard has had added, which is more consistent impact and staying involved in the game and really, you know commanding the ball and, and and being involved and and I think also maturing as a player is about knowing that not every pass is going to be a through ball that splits the defense for a goal right that mm. that not every pass is a, a a party piece or a piece of outrageous skill but to be fair I thought when Sambi was in there and I thought when you know Tomiyasu was in there and Tierney was in, the distances weren't great and you know, I think he's a player who really thrives yeah. on those triangles, right? Those yeah. those close control players, those technical players, they love the triangles. I thought the distances weren't great early. Yeah, I, I love the player, and I think Arteta does. And I, I will tell you, all you have to do is watch Arteta talk about him early in the season yeah. when he was injured and he wasn't playing. He says this player is going to arrive, and when he does, you're not going to be able to stop talking about him. Um, I I think there's a lot more to come from him this season. One of the things that maybe not worried me, but I think was concerning to me in this game was the play of the fullbacks. And and Tomiyasu in particular, I thought was rusty. I know Paul gave him a stock falling, which may be a little harsh, but um, you know, Tomiyasu was a candidate for our player of the season last season until the season was wrecked by injury. And he's just missed so much time. And I think he almost has to relearn it a bit. Um, he, he didn't look he didn't look great with his ball progression. There was one really nice overlapping run he made Saka gave it to him and this is harsh I mean, these are little moments but he just fired it right into the keeper's hands right from the byline yeah w- what do you think about about Tomiyasu's performance and where this this player's Arsenal career goes because he was a star for us last season burst onto the scene all the headlines and and now he's having to bide his time and 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 he's obviously missed a lot of time through injury and I don't think he looks anywhere near what he was for us last season at the moment yeah, it's something you'll get used to. Players come and they'll come in and go out and they're playing blocks. Again, look at City. Yeah. They've got um, they've got Diaz. He's not really playing much at the moment. I'm not sure if he's injured or not. They've got a Kanji mm. and, and Nathan Aki's playing a lot of minutes. That wasn't the case a few you know, a few months ago. You, you go around. John Stones has played plenty of time on the sideline. Carl Walker can't get in because they've got a kid playing there at the moment. And so mm-hmm. he goes up and down. You just got to get comfortable with the fact that you're not always hot, right? So. And yeah. at half time, I sent a tweet out. I said yesterday that I thought he was doing fine. But the reason why I thought he was doing fine, because we haven't seen much of him. And I thought he looked quite quick. I thought he looked quite sharp. Mm. He looked quite good defensively. And he had a load of defensive tackles and clearance like he normally does. So, as far as I'm concerned, my back five players have got to be defenders. And my front five players have got to be attackers. Right. So, that's, that's the way I look at him. So, defensively, I thought he was fine. Then I looked at, I looked at the, I looked at my app. And um, Mm -hmm. I see the pass percentage. And a lot of people still judge fullbacks on their passing and their crossing. Mm. And that's the lasting memory they have of them. If they get around the outside and they and they don't and they cross it into the car park, which was available in this game, they cross it into the car park, (laughs) um, then basically that's the last memory they have and they forget all the other things. They forget the five tackles which you had in this game, one on one. And and so for me, I'm looking at him if Ben White tweaked his hamstring in this game and we had to play him against Son at the weekend, we'd be fine. And we'd all be loving him. Right? So remember that. You know, when we played against Liverpool and he boxed out Salah, mashed him. Right? That was only a little while ago. There is a something here, Elliot, that maybe we need to, eventually we'll, I think the game will start talking about. Um, it's the impact of the World Cup. Right, so we've got three or four players where I think the World Cup has impacted them. 
Tom Yasu, injury-wise, and his change in training, he, he could be one of them. Shaka, until last night, wasn't looking great. And Ramsdale Sleeper mm-hmm. left out of the whole squad. You know, they haven't looked great. You know, they, and I spoke about this yesterday. If you're if you're Saliba, where you are top of the hill, best young defender in the Premier League, you go to France, you're behind Upamecano, you're behind Canate, you're behind Varane, and suddenly you're getting half an hour in the tournament. That might affect you. Aaron Ramsdale, top of the league, yeah. flicking ones around the corners, playing really well, loads of touches, progressing the ball. Everyone's loving Arsenal. Only dropped like three points out of about 100 million. You go to England... <laughs> And um, you see this bloke called Nick Pope ahead of you that can't can't lace his you know for me trundling around the area, you know it's just it's just not even it's not even a, what, what you're doing, and so he's now gone from being not top man at the top team to third choice for England. It affects you, yeah. right? And, and I think it yeah. a few of our players have been affected by the tournament, the perception, the hierarchy, how they're perceived there versus how they're perceived with Arsenal. Ben White's another one potentially. Not perceived well by England, perceived like a Rolls Royce by Arsenal. Let me get back there really, really quickly. So we have mm-hmm. to talk about the psychological impact of the World Cup. If you're a Chelsea fan today, what about the actual injury impact of the World Cup? You know, how many injuries are people having? People are they're going down, right? So it's one to watch. We just got to make sure that we look after our players and they get back to some sort of mental and physical well-being, which we're used to. That's what I'm after. Well, one of our players that did impress in the World Cup continues to impress. I have to admit that the transforma- transformation might be too big a word, but the the improvement we've seen in Matt Turner, I think, is at least worth a nod. I don't think we need a whole section on it, but yep. Brilliant. He, he started out you know, in preseason looking like this was going to be too big for him. Like, right, he hadn't played a lot of first-team football. He suddenly stepped up to a club he loves, you know, in, in the biggest league in the world. And I was a little, I was a little nervous for him from what I saw early on, and he's answered any questions anybody had. I mean, he's he's looked really good in all of his appearances, and not just making saves or catching the ball, commanding his area, but good with his feet as well. Um, and you know, to your point, was the guy for the USA in the yeah, tournament. Exactly. Played really well. Played Arsenal football for the USA in the tournament. You know what I mean? Not yeah. just saving tons of shots and booting it long. So I think he deserves just a quick quick kudos for how far he's come. I did hear you say uh, on the instant reaction, I'm going to out you here on the main pod, that <laughs> that he's coming for Ramsdale's place um, and look out. And I'm going to say, no, that's not happening. But, well, you know, I will you know. say that that's the attitude he's got to have, and that's the attitude that he has. And he's displaying it. Yeah. In every minute, uh, and we talked about Sambi earlier, in every minute he plays, he's saying, I just want you to know, boss, you can trust me if you want mm-hmm. to make a decision. You know what I mean? That's all he can do. That is all he can do. Yeah. Now, Sambi's not saying that to me. He's not saying that to any of us at the moment. And that's all you've got to do. All you can do is say, look, I, I know I'm not as good as Granit Xhaka. He is the main man in the dressing room. But I'm not going to let it depress me. I'm going to make sure that you know if for one minute he's looking a bit tired, you can trust me. At the moment, in yeah. one game, he... Arteta brought on El Nenny in the eight position rather than bring him on. That <laughs> tells you all you need yeah. to know. Right, so. yeah. um, I, so, all right. So one other thing I'll mention, I think Gabriel Magalhaes is, is just playing great. And I, I'm so happy for him because he's a player that I think has been unfairly maligned at times in his Arsenal career. Like, yeah, he's had a few ricks in him. He's had a few wobbles. But since he's arrived, basically since the day he's arrived at Arsenal, as really an under-the-radar unheralded signing, he's come in and been the man for us at centre-back. Yeah. Um, and yes, Saliba stole some of the thunder early in the season, but a lot of the times when Saliba's made the one silly mistake he's gotten him, right? The one the one square ball that gets picked off or whatever it is, he's there making the, the last ditch save. He's there, you know, he's there making a block. He's there making a critical intervention. His passing numbers are great. They don't get nearly the credit they deserve. He chips him with some goals. I love that player. Yeah. And we have so much talent right now and so much exciting young talent that I understand why he doesn't always get the plaudits he deserves, but it's probably a shame because I know when he makes his next mistake, we'll hear about it. And I, yeah. I just don't think it's reflective of who he's been for us, which is really an immense player ever since he's come in. Yeah, I, from the moment he stepped in for me, he's been our best defender, literally from day one, in the way in the in the raw defensive side of the game. You know, and, um, yeah. he heads out airplanes, he does everything around the box, he's aggressive, he... 
and, and his passing is improving. And he's brave, Elliot. He's brave to, to yeah. make the passes. And so mm-hmm. people who do the right things intention-wise, I, I always give them a break. Um, again, w- w- there was a period in my recent Arsenal life for all of us as well, when Koscielny played, we felt better when he, was, when he played. You know, mm-hmm. But we, we could never rest him. And eventually we broke him. Do you know what I mean? Ruined him, yeah. and cost him a World Cup title. Cost yeah. him, he was captain of that team, by the way. Yeah. So imagine imagine what he's thinking. And so yeah. there are rumors about us getting a left foot centre back. Maybe what we got in the club was going to get promoted. Who knows? But we need to make sure he doesn't play these games. You know? And yeah. Because we've got to be fair to him. I think he's had 51 starts, some of that, in a row. Mm. Like I mean, yeah. I can't imagine a team without him. And so, so we need we need that level of everybody needs to break him now and again. You know, we can't just assume he's going to play through everything and be brilliant all the time. It's one of the reasons why I think Tomiyasu's match fitness is important, by the way, because with all due respect to Rob Holding, who's you know a great guy, and actually Arteta speaks about his importance in the group. But I think you'd rather have Tomiyasu starting if he had to at center back than holding in, in a meaningful game. So something to keep an eye on. We've kind of buried one of the lead stories, though, Clive, which is mm-hmm. the return of Emil Smith-Rowe. Oh, um, I'm so glad you remembered. You know, and like, I, I've kind of saved it for last because I don't, I don't, almost don't want to overdo it. <laughs> I, I almost don't want to put too much pressure on this poor kid's body as you, just making it back. There's been a long road back. He looked fit. He looked uh, muscly. You know, he, he, looked, he looked filled big. out. Um, yeah. yeah. And now that can be a bad thing. You know, we've seen, we saw Jack Wilshire come back from a long injury spell big no. and that didn't, that didn't work for his, for his game. But what did you think? I mean, it's, it's not much to go on and it's against Oxford and it's in a game that was won, but it's just brilliant to have him back. He's a player we're going to need, you know? Yeah. So when you, you know, sometimes you look down on the screen and you go, okay, I'm not sure about you, man. I'm not sure about you. Smith Rowe came on. And I'm not sure he even played a decent pass, but just the way he moved, I thought, okay, <laughs> there you are. You know what I mean? You're you're there. You he looked like a man. He looked strong. He looked, you know, he he still got that give me the ball gene. He's just a player, mate. And um, I can't wait to have him back. I think this is really important because I've been talking about two signings, and the reason why because I didn't wasn't sure about where he was. So these nights are so instructive. So I've walked away with real concerns about ball progression in midfield and really the drop-off is too big. It's too big, you know, and we've got too much talent we have to get the ball to. And I'm now thinking if Smith throws back, we just need one signing because we have our six because that player can play, you know, and if he can give us 20 minutes in games, we're we're fine. You know, we've got the ability to to manage the, the running towards the end of the season. So huge night for him. Hopefully, there's no reactions from him today. His future's in his body. And if he gets his body into that Jack Grealish type shape, it's obvious that's what he needs, you know? But the difference between him and yeah. Jack Wilshire is he's six foot and he's strong. He's got, he, he's, he's much more athletic across the ground. He bounces off the floor. He, he can drive yeah. with it at real speed. The athleticism and extra fitness will give him extra power and speed. And that's only going to benefit him. He can shoot off both feet anywhere you like. He can finish one touch around the box. He's a really, really interesting footballer for us. And one that maybe I've not say forgotten because I've been, we've all been secretly hoping he's going to come back. But I don't think we remember quite how good he was. There were games last year that he was basically winning with his goals. And we've just not had that for a long time. So huge night for him and huge night for us in the next half of the season. Yeah. Yep. And and I mean, uh, I saw you with the sneaky mute to keep the dog out of the podcast, um, but we are a dog friendly podcast. Um, look, we got a couple of things that I think are really good out of this game, which is we get Eddie and continuing his hot scoring run going into the Derby. We get Fabio Vieira, feeling confident so that when we go into the Derby and we look on the bench, what little we have, we may be willing to call on. That hasn't been the case. If we need to call on him, I think the manager will feel a little better calling on him coming from this game. We got some minutes into legs, into Tomiyasu's legs, into Emil Smith-Rowe's legs, critically right. We got some minutes out of legs, and I think it is very instructive who we rested. No Ramsdale, that's obvious, right? Cupkeeper, but no Saliba, no Party, no Odegaard. 
Zinchenko comes on late, right? We know who we have to protect. We know who we can be a little bit, you know, less careful with. There was a scare for Saka, but according to Arteta, he's fine. Yeah. He's he said he is fine. This is the exact quote. Saka is fine. He's fine. <laughs> That's the exact quote. Yeah. So if he's not fine, I'm going to be very, very mad at Mikel Arteta, but it sounds like he's fine. So, Clive, uh, we'll do a full Derby preview on the next pod this week, but just as a little a little look ahead, let's skip the Derby for a second. This sets up a matchup with Manchester City. That's going to be a really tricky one. First of all, I understand that, look, City are strong enough that they could play their second team, and if we play our second team, you could get heavily beaten at the Etihad. And I don't think you want that to happen. By the same token, the game that matters is the one in the league. We know Mikel Arteta, he's going to go for all of it or try to go for all of it. No, by the way, there's going to be Europa League coming up around that time. So how do you, how do you see that playing out? Because I, look, you can't lose to Oxford. It's an embarrassment you need to avoid and we avoided it. But having lost to Oxford would have spared us having to figure out what the heck to do with back-to-back city, city games. So what, what do you think about that? impending uh, challenge that we have facing us. And that's why the um, the Smith Rowe thing is is important. And and Mm. I could, I could, well, what I'll say, I think we'll make, we made seven changes last night. We might make five. Do you know what I mean? And, and Mm -hmm. there are players like Saliba, Party will be around. Do you know what I mean? To make sure that the game is, is managed appropriately. So I, I'm not worried about it. What I am worried about is the three. We have three games versus City this season, and for me, it's not, it's not always a result. It's the emotional drain that can sometimes have on you. You know, if it goes wrong, but if it goes right, you've you've really got a chance. You know, you've got a chance to really yeah. show people that you've arrived. So I would look at. I'm trying to be a bit bit more positive about it. Um, I watched a City in the Chelsea game in the first game, and I thought. They were okay. They eventually got there. They're a good side, right? They're, they're a good side. But we are the sort of side that has the personality to play them and to the personality to get on the ball and to make them run around and run backwards. And they've got the ability to do that to us too. I think they're going to be really exciting games. Can't wait for them. No inferiority complex on me. Bit worried about the cup game only because some of the players we've spoken about may not be at the level, you know? And um, so, but. It's up to the manager to manage that. It's over 90 minutes, by the way, with five subs in all these games. We don't need yeah. to empty the tank out. So, um, yeah, as long as the, the damage emotionally isn't too great, either way, whether it be a massive positive result, could sometimes lead to complacency, you know, and what you've had to do to get that result. And if, if it's a massively negative result, what that does to the narrative that Arsenal can't handle the pressure of Man City pending, catching them up, et cetera, et cetera. So it's all there for us, but it's just a game. Spurs is the most important one, mate, that we go there in tip-top shape, ready to take them, ready to take them. You know what's weird? We play Spurs and United. City play United and Spurs. Yeah. And, like, the the calculus around what these outcomes could mean is is pretty interesting, right? Because Mm. you win both. And City drop points. You're a big favorite in the title. City win both. You drop points. The title may be over, but your season still looks good. City drop points, and we drop points. And suddenly, United and Spurs are... I mean, maybe not Spurs, but United are right there. Yeah. And now it's United and Newcastle and Arsenal and City. So it is an interesting moment we face. um, You know, because there's more on the line in a way than just where we are versus city. There's obviously beating our hated rival. There's keeping United far enough back in the rear view that we don't have to think about them. Right. There's a, there's a lot at play in, in the, in the next fortnight uh, for, for city and Arsenal and United and Spurs. You know? Yeah. And um, you know, we, we're moaning about what well, I'm moaning about our lack of ball progression last night. And we've got four players we could add straight into a, in Saliba mm. party, Odegaard, and Shaka, and then Zinchenko, white, yeah, white, white, which fixes Zinchenko. that problem mm-hmm. immediately, mm-hmm. right? And um, so everything starts to move. It's just the the next group just needs to sharpen up on that. And um, and and maybe there's a debate, mate. There is a debate. Do we need a signing to help fix that? Do El Nenny's been looked at by Aston Villa? Sambi, does he need to go on loan? 
Um, do we need a signing? And that's not something I would have said a month ago, but I'm starting to think about it differently because not a lot of important. noise around it. There's not a lot of noise, and maybe <laughs> yeah. it's what we have. But yeah, it's a big drop off yesterday when it came to that. Well, and I'll say this: this is why. You know, people are like, oh, don't be an accountant. If Mudrick's 80 million, who cares? Just buy him. This is why you have to care, right? Because mm. if Mudrick was 35 million, maybe there's also a midfielder on the agenda this January. Yeah. But if Arteta says, I, I want to spend 80 million on Mudrick, KSE might be saying, well, that's what you get in January then. that That's what we're going to go to. We're not going to do 80 million plus 40 on a midfielder, right? And and you could say, well, then they're too tight or they're not pushing the boat. I, I mean, that's not my debate. My point is more about opportunity cost, which is the reason you kind of have to care about price is because what you spend on one player may have ramifications for what you can do on other players. Yeah. Um, and I think everybody would acknowledge that really, really what Arsenal needs, maybe not in January, but what we need are two forwards and a midfielder. That's what we need. Yes. Two forwards and a midfielder yeah. at a minimum to, to really be in the position we want to be in. But if you're going 80 million for Mudrick, I'm going to tell you right now, I think you're just getting Mudrick. So yeah. it is what it is. I, I I think we're in a good position. Obviously, our, our first team is, our first 11 anyway, or 12, is really, really good. And we go into the Derby, I think, in good shape. Um, And... Look, I know it's so cliche to say form goes out the window in Derby. I think if the referees don't decide this one, there's no question that our football is going to beat their football. Yeah, but they play counterattack, and we're vulnerable to those long straight balls. So it's yeah. it's going to be we're an less interesting vulnerable than last year. We'll see. We're less you vulnerable know? than last year, and I will say it again: our midfield all got a rest, and they're going to I'll, be. I'll ready. say this, Clive. We're less vulnerable than last year if Saliba's in the form we kind of have come to expect, yeah. right? I mean, uh, so that's that's. I he think needs he, to find, he needs to find his best form now. I think he has been doing some heavy training this week to get him ready for the weekend, <laughs> and yeah. he was sitting on his settee, and quite rightly, he's had a, he's had an interesting period over the World Cup, and he's come back in. He's had a couple of games to get his legs back. Now let's work on his sharpness, get his feet moving, and he'll be absolutely fine in no time at all. My coherence is fading. I think we should knock this one on the head. We're going to have something really, really exciting for you tomorrow uh, that you do not want to miss. And then uh, a, a Derby preview pod probably on Friday. We, we just, just going to be a great, great week of content aside from this nonsense that I put out while, while very jet lagged. Thanks to Clive for carrying it. Uh, Clive's on Twitter. Clive, PFC. Thanks, Clive. Thank you very much. See you for dinner. Yes, sir. Yes, you will. Uh, my name is Alex Smith. Blackman on Twitter. Yankee Gunner. Thanks for putting up with me post transatlantic flight, but uh, look, I mean, it's an FA Cup tie against Oxford, right? You, you, I'm th think of this as my my Sambi Lakanga performance. It's okay, it's all right. I'll, I'll get back to I'll get back to I was going to say Thomas Party levels. I don't have that in me. I'll get back to something closer closer to first team levels the next time out. We love you, and my God, please, we will talk to you after Arsenal ten Spurs no.